four, three, two. You don't make a whole bunch of new ones or anything, you know. Oh, change them. Yeah, that's. I don't know. I kind of care about it, but if anything, I hope it doesn't really, you know, change a lot. I know, I just couldn't get moving. Will you fix this for me, please? Sure. I only have time for coffee. Okay. Thank you, Joey. <laughs> you need a haircut, Joey. I'll go get the paper.
we're getting very close and uh, we like each other's company a lot. He's comfortable and we're comfortable together. And that's really important, so I think we'll be spending more time together than we've done in the past few months.
you know, go do something wrong with it. Don't you want that job? Yeah. It's just, uh... Why can't you, you know, why do you feel the way you do, how do you feel? That's the thing now, just now, when he takes us everywhere, what's he going to do later on? Well, if, if he's going to do anything, he's probably just, you know, bend them a little bit, the rules they have now. I hope you don't make a whole bunch of new ones or anything, you know? Or change them. Yeah, that's, I don't know, I kind of care about it, but... If anything, I hope it doesn't really, you know, change a lot. If they change, you know, it only will be a little bit. They must have talked about it before. Oh, yeah, they must have. Probably. I don't think you should worry about it too much. Well, I gotta go. Okay, see you, guys. See you, John. In my, in how I, you know, uh, where I'm allowed to go or what I'm allowed to do. I probably could cope with that, but is it going to be any different than it was? to believe that Zordak, in spite of our differences, would mount a revolution. I'm afraid that the answer may lie in open rebellion. General! Yes, my queen. Zordak has allowed androids to be retained and has not had them terminated as you ordered. Bring Zordak here, now. Zordak is not in his chamber. Arrest Zordak and his followers. Stop those vessels and the way you have. Any suggestions? Then I assemble a group of volunteers and we pursue the Plundower through the black hole and straight to hell if necessary. I'm a volunteer. Not this time. Do you realize what we've done? Well, aren't you afraid of anyone? He 
man. I'm not afraid of anyone or anything. What a brave little boy. I tell. Be back here in one hour. You look, we look. Find Brant and the Earth Boy. Yes, sir. Well, Lydell is a scientist. And like the general said, they probably have some big experiment planned. <sighs> look, Doug, when the time is right, we're going to get out of here. Sounds good to me. We're going to see what the Plindau is made of. Yes, sir. The last thing we need is an all-out confrontation with the Questar. Keep firing. Sir. We're going to blow the Plindau right out of the galaxy. This Saturday, November 9th, we at Cinekid will be holding our annual Fall Bazaar from 10 o'clock a.m. to 4 o'clock p.m. Join us for a Saturday filled with games, prizes, and food. Get photos of your kids. Walk through our terrifying haunted house. Visit our video arcade. And then settle down and munch out at our baked goods table. Proceeds from this bazaar directly benefit our kids. Remember, that's this Saturday, November 9th, from 10 o'clock a.m. to 4 o'clock p.m. at Syndicate Enterprises. For further information or directions, call 659-4696. After all this fun and excitement, you'll want to sit back and relax for the evening. So come back to Syndicate at 7 o'clock and join us for... This and every Saturday, Syndicate presents its own family movie night, and you're invited. Each week, entertainment for the whole family, from Western action to science fiction to comedy to our famous Walt Disney nights. From the old classics to the newest box office hits, Syndicate shows them on the big screen. Plus, there's cartoons, popcorn, and even door prizes at the intermission. If you let us know in advance, we even have birthday parties with group rates. Admission is by tax-deductible donation of $2. The doors open at 7 o'clock and the show starts at 7.30. For directions or information on what's playing this week, call 659-4696. An entire evening of fun and entertainment for all. Cinekids Family Movie Night. Don't miss it. Besides teaching you all the technical stuff, it also gives you a lot of responsibility. But it's not only responsibility that makes Cinekid work. We all get along, you know, because we all, we all share common interests. Everyone's friends here. It's a lot of fun. So as you can see, this is a pretty impressive operation. How impressive is it? You be the judge. This entire story has been taped, written, and edited by the kids at Cinekid. This is Tug McGraw, Channel 6, Action News. Nice going, gang. <laughs> Good job. It is pretty impressive, isn't it? Hi, I'm Wendy Worthington. And that aspect of Cinekid is the aspect that most people see the first time they look at the organization. It's an important part of what we do, but there's a lot more to this organization than that aspect. And what we'd like to do today is to give you some glimpse of what else it is that Cinekid does so well. Cinekid, from the very beginning, has been involved pretty intensively with the kids who've been part of the organization. One of Cinekid's first productions, in fact, emphasized that concern for kids. The program was called Joey, and it concerned a 12-year-old boy.
While this award-winning film was a dramatization, Syndicate students and adults acted out their scenes. It was the first time we focused on the problems of growing up as a subject for one of the students' productions. The feeling of being all alone is a common one for most youngsters, and yet the storyline of Joey took us to the reality of life, where some children really are alone. Through no fault of their own, their family falls apart, and with neither parents or relatives to care for them, they're made wards of the court and placed in foster care. The basic problems of adolescence are compounded by being cast adrift and by a heartbreaking feeling that no one really cares. From the very beginning, we at Syndicate felt that we were never doing quite enough for our students if all we managed to teach them were the basics of production. Since our executive director, Bob Clark, has been both a, a parent and a foster parent, since so many of the syndicate professional staff have been trained to work with children and young people, we steadily expanded the structure of syndicate to include a number of youth services. While never as well publicized as our productions themselves, those support services to kids are the cornerstone of Syndicate. And a good part of our own instructional program is focused on teaching our students to reach out to others. And that caring would, a few years after Syndicate started, take on a new meaning and allow our organization to share with other deserving youth, especially those placed in foster homes. The genesis of Syndicate itself and of a very special program that Syndicate runs each December called The Giving Tree goes back 25 years to when our executive director, Bob Clark, was still in college and saw an episode of an old TV series called Route 66. What did you think of him? What did I think of whom? The boy, this morning. You catch him? also assume that I'm a cop? City County Welfare. A right-handed social worker. What did I think of him? He looked hungry, he needed a haircut, a new pair of pants, and a hickory stick across his bottom. Let's say he comes around again. What do you do? Grab him, shake my wallet out, and whistle for the cops. Once more. What do you do? Call you? That's right. I would appreciate it. Who is this kid? His name is Joby Paxton. Male Caucasian, age 13, height 4'11", weight 85 pounds. No scars, no deformities, no parents. He lost his mother and father in May. They were fishing for Benita in the Gulf trying to set a better table. Like one of those random by the hour skips, squall coffin. Later on Pottery Island, they found the hull with the Benito attached to it, but that was all. So I moved Joby and Susie in. Susie is his sister. Joby took it for two weeks, and he ran away one night. I've got to get back to work. Mr. Corelli. I can't get him out of my mind.
Here's Mark Weaver, a longtime member of Cinekid, to introduce a program we call the Giving Tree. Let me explain to you how it works. People make donations in the name of a loved one, their children, or, you know, the child would make it for their mom and dad. And the money comes into Cinekid, and a, a ball is hung on the Giving Tree. Uh, a red one represents a $5 donation, a blue one represents $10, and a gold one represents uh, $25 or over. The money is taken and is you all of it, 100% of the money, is used to buy Christmas presents for needy children who might not otherwise, you know, have Christmas presents. Uh, the presents are, are bought by Cinekids and taken over to the Montgomery County Children's Aid Society. And from there, they're distributed to uh, little children. Borrowing the name from the title of a book by Shel Silverstein, Syndicate has sponsored an annual program each December, securing a Santa list from Children's Aid and raising sufficient money to purchase a gift for each and every child in a county foster home. The gifts are given anonymously. The giving tree itself symbolizes the efforts of our youngsters and their genuine compassion. For the past six years, the giving tree program has been supported almost entirely by the students and families of Sinekid. However, as a growing number of youngsters have joined the foster care program, we've been hard pressed to keep up with those numbers. And for this year, we would like to enlist the care and support of outside individuals, service groups, and businesses in making sure that every youngster in the foster care program is a part of Cinekid's giving tree. Your tax-deductible contribution will brighten this holiday season for many children who might otherwise feel that they are truly all alone. Thank you.